Hey everybody! Today I'm going to show you how to connect the Hamshield audio to a computer. Now, we can't use the jack that's on the Hamshield because that's designed to drive a speaker and microphone or a headset. So this can't be connected directly into the input of a computer's audio jack. But we can use the audio adapter in order to create a crossover link between the audio on the ham shield and a computer's audio. So what we're going to do is we're going to assemble this kit. This is the uh, audio crossover adapter board. And once this is assembled, we can use a TRRS male-to-male -male adapter cable in order to connect the ham shield to our computer. This is the contents of the ham shield audio adapter kit. We have the PCB right here. This is a header that allows the PCB to be connected to the ham shield. We have two capacitors, and we have three resistors. We have two 1.2 kilo ohm resistors and one 10 kilo ohm resistor. We also have this uh, audio jack, and we have the female header, which you can solder into the ham shield that allows this board to be plugged into the ham shield and removed. Okay. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put the through-hole components into the board. So the two capacitors are exactly the same type, and it doesn't matter which direction they go in. So I'll just slide the capacitors into the board, and then on the back of the board, I'll bend the capacitor's leads to keep them in place. And I'll put the second capacitor in, in the second capacitor slot. And then I'll just bend those leads to keep them in place. Once these are in place, I can solder the capacitor's leads down. Okay. To solder the leads down, first apply the iron right to the lead and to the pad and get it hot. And then feed the solder in and allow the solder to melt around the, uh, the pad. And you want to make sure that there is enough solder all around the capacitor's lead to make a good connection. And then you can go on to the next lead. And then we can do the second capacitor. And the key here is you really want to make sure that you're using the heat of the iron. Just hold the iron there, let the iron get everything really hot, and then the solder just flows right on. Once you have these leads soldered in, we can cut off the remaining. All right, we have the two capacitors soldered in now. The next step will be to solder in the resistors. Now, I'm gonna put in the 10 kilo ohm resistor first. That's this resistor that's all by itself. That resistor is R2, which is right in the middle here. So we're going to put that resistor right in the middle. And then I'm going to put the other two resistors, the 1.2 kilo ohm resistors, as R1 and R3. And the easiest way to do this is to just bend the leads of the resistor and then slide it in. So there's 10 kilo ohms, which is brown, black, orange, and I've just placed it in as R2, and bent the leads so it's not going to fall out. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the 1.2 kilo ohm resistors. I'm just going to bend the wires, slide the wires into the hole, and then bend the wires on the other side so that it's not going to fall out. Okay, those resistors are all in place now, and now I can solder them in. So I'm just going to mount this upside down, and I'm going to come in with my soldering iron, and I'm going to get the pads really hot just by holding the iron against the pad and the wire. And once it starts to get hot, I'll feed the solder in just like so. 
and I'm just going to do all six pads just like that. And now, those resistors are soldered in place. And the final thing that I'll do is take some wire cutters and cut the excess wire off of these. There we go. Now the last two things to solder on are the audio jack and the header. All right, so the next step is to solder on the audio jack. Now the audio jack only goes on one way. It has these little plastic pegs on the bottom, which line up with these holes here. And I can just mount that jack on, just like so. And it's a little bit loose. It's I don't want to bump it or it'll come off, but it should stay in position long enough for me to solder these pads down. And once I get the first pad down, it'll be fixed in position and it won't move. So I'm going to first get my iron and I'm going to come in and I'm going to just put some solder down on that last pin right there. So that pin is soldered in place and now the jack is fixed in position. So now I can be a little bit less gentle when I go and solder in the rest of these. And there's also one to do on the other side. Just like so. All right, that jack is now soldered on. Now, the next step here is to solder on the male header jack the next step here is to solder on the male header right here. So what I'm going to do is orient the board so it's sideways so that I can balance this header right in here. And if you have a set of helping hands or alligator clips, this can actually make it a lot easier. I'm going to grab some solder and I'm going to solder one of these, and I'm letting the heat do all the work. And once I have enough solder there, I'm just going to make sure that this is in alignment. And when the solder cools on that one pin, that'll let me go and uh, solder all of the other pins together. And this board is now complete. Okay, so we've just assembled this board. We started by putting on these two capacitors, soldering them down. Then we put the three resistors on with the 10 kilo ohm single resistor in the middle and the 1.2 kilo ohm resistors on the um, either side of that. We soldered on the jack and we soldered on the header. Now, what we can do is plug that whole board into the ham shield just like so. And this adapter board allows us to use that 3.5 millimeter TRRS cable to connect the ham shield to the audio input and output of a laptop or other computer.